far this reporting season, we got a few disturbing signs that at least for some companies, like say Caterpillar, the earnings may have peaked last quarter. It's worrisome. It's worrisome if it's true, which is why I want to investigate whenever I see something similar. Consider the case of Briggs & Stratton, the company that makes gasoline engines for outdoor power equipment, along with their own pressure washers, snow blowers, and small consumer-oriented power generators. Briggs & Stratton reported on Wednesday, and the numbers were actually pretty darn disappointing. While the company delivered a one-cent earnings beat off an 83-cent basis, its revenues came in light, up just 1.2% year-over-year, and its margins were under pressure. But more importantly, management cut their full-year guidance across the board. They cut their revenue forecast, they cut their margin forecast, they cut their earnings forecast. On the other hand, the lower guidance mostly seems to be the result of some number, let's say, one-time-only issues. Still, the stock got slammed. It lost 11% of its value yesterday. And while it made up some of those losses in today's session, we got to take a closer look at this. So let's check in with Todd Teske, the president, chairman, and CEO of Briggs & Stratton. Learn more about the quarter and his company's prospects. Mr. Teske, welcome back to Mad Money. Great to be here, Jim. Thanks. All right, so, Todd, walk us through what happened here, because I know that you had a, a, a craftsman uh, t- took over in Lowe's. You had some issues with freight. There's also, obviously, some weather issues. How do we make sense of these, and what is the real Briggs & Stratton run rate, so to speak? Yeah, Jim, if you take a look at what happened with the guidance, I mean, the quarter didn't come in too badly, but ultimately the guidance was the problem. And there was a number of transitory things that happened. We had the situation where Craftsman is going to be transitioning next season into Lowe's. And so some of the channel partners that we have are keeping a very close eye on inventories to prevent some of the markdown dollars and the transition costs that go along with transitioning a brand. And by the way, this is a pretty significant transition that's going on. And then on top of that, we had obviously a lot of very strange weather events. We had the nor'easters in the northeast. We had historic uh, snowstorms here up in the upper Midwest. And when you look at it, the season really hasn't broken yet across the country. And so we just thought it was prudent to, to, to guide to a lower number simply because of these transitory kind of more one-time things. Yet at the same time, when you look at what's been happening, we're executing on our strategy. I mean. When you, when you look at our, our commercial, uh, last time I was on, we talked a little bit about mm-hmm. the commercial sales, and we have a tremendous focus on that. And so if you look at trailing 12 uh, months, it, we are up about 13%. So, I mean, we have a huge focus on that. It is coming okay. through, and we're also making some investments through our business optimization that really focus on commercial mowers and commercial engines. Right. And so there's a number of things that are happening, and I think – there was just a lot of different moving pieces, okay. which is why I think you probably saw the stock react the way right. it did. Now, what did exactly happen at Lowe's? Because I think our viewers are going to say, well, what are they saying? Craftsman, Lowe's, Briggs & Stratton. I want to buy Briggs & Stratton. Did Lowe's decide to go only with Craftsman? So here's what happened. So Craftsman has historically been at Sears, but several months ago, Stanley Black & Decker bought the Craftsman brand and ultimately now are going to be taking it into Lowe's. That got announced a few months ago. And so what's happening is we've been, we've been with Craftsman for quite some time. And when you look at the Craftsman brand and the Briggs brand together, uh, it's two iconic brands mm-hmm. that are out there. And we've been at Sears for quite some time with that. Now as they transition and Stanley Black & Decker is going well beyond the outdoor power space, you're starting to see the transition happen where uh, some brands, there's going to be some brands that are there today that are going to either transition out or, or become lesser. And so you've got the transition costs that – are out there if there's too much inventory at the end of the season. So the channel partners, again, are really working their way through it. But we're excited about uh, that we've, we've powered Craftsman for a long time, and we want to do whatever we can to help with this transition that's going on at Lowe's. Got it. Now, you've returned $355 million since fiscal year 2012, but your market cap right now is $780 million. That's kind of weird when you think about it. Uh, it's almost like either your market cap's too low or you or you sent too much back to the shareholders. In, in retrospect, was there another way to be able to create value other than just because the stock is way low and yet you spin off all this cash that shareholders get? Well, it really comes back to, Jim, it's our capital allocation policy. And so as we go through and, and look to reinvest in the business, which, which is exactly what we're doing with our business optimization. Uh, and then we, we look for acquisitions. And you've seen us do some smaller acquisitions. We will do larger acquisitions, but we want to we be very careful in terms of making sure we can get that return on investment and, and the return on capital that we're looking for. 
And then lastly, we'll return money to the shareholders. And so right. we do that through dividends and we do that through share buybacks. And so share buybacks have been one of those things that we've used to return the money to the shareholders. So is this a good opportunity because your stock has really gotten clobber? You're down with 3% yield, which to me says that's unusual for, for Briggs & Stratton. Well, when I, when I look at the long-term opportunities that we have, it's really exciting. And that's why it's a little frustrating when you go through a quarter like this where you do okay in the quarter, but there's some really transitory things that are out there. But when you look at the longer-term strategy, it's solid. This is the fundamentals of this company are really solid. We're executing on that strategy, and there's a lot of really great things, on the, especially on the commercial side, but also on the residential side. There's some tailwinds that we start to see coming down the pike with housing and that sort of thing. So there's a lot to be optimistic about. It's just, you know, you, you get into one of these quarters where things didn't quite work out right. in terms of the guidance that we had to give. Fair enough. Well, Todd, thank you so much for coming back on. Yeah, tough quarter, but stock yields three now, and you got the spring coming. Thank you so much, Todd Tessie, Chairman, President, CEO of Briggs & Stratton. Good to see you, sir. Thanks a lot, Jim. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.